it's still Friday. Woohoo! Although when you're watching this, it will be Sunday. Sunday. So if you're not, I will be in a grumpy frame of mind because it's Sunday before we go to work. Um, so the next one, the next of the three that I'm doing tonight, um, of the three closed distilleries uh, that begin with a C and, and are very, very difficult to get hold of. So this is actually in a box. Um, this was in a, um, it was like a cardboard box full of whiskey miniatures that I got given by um, a friend of a friend who was clearing out a, a whole load of stuff that he'd kind of acquired over the years. And it wasn't even his, it was kind of family members and stuff and presents and this and that and the other. And he was like, I'm gonna chuck it, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, and I've sat on it for ages, to be perfectly honest, and not even looked through some of it, just kind of going, oh, that looks a bit interesting, and just not got anywhere near it. And when I was setting everything up for the challenge, um, I was going through, finally going through all this stuff, um, these miniatures, not a lot, there was about, 30 of them and quite a few of them were just like box standard versions but there was one or two and they were like connoisseurs choice that were in these boxes and i found this and i was like holy crap i'd never even heard of it what is it so i did a bit of research then so this would have been back in just after christmas and gone oh blimey this is a bit of a rare one so what i thought was initially was maybe i should try and auction it and then um you you know whatever i get for it i'll put it in towards the charity part but i, I there's no chance of me for anybody giving me a donation of this so i'm like do you know what i might make more by having this in the challenge and putting it towards you know the whole challenge which has already raised me over 1500 quid for charity so far which is just phenomenally good and there are some potentially exciting things that might be coming up in the near future that could earn even more towards the charity. Um, so do you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to have it in the challenge. And there's going to be potentially half a miniature left for somebody, I don't know who, kind of depends on how good it is, I guess. So Colburn, um, which was founded in 1896 here, somewhere here, um, by John Robertson and Sons. And it took its name from um, charcoal burn um, because the area itself was a bit of a center for charcoal production and um, was a kind of a you know, relatively small distillery that was being kind of used for blends and things like that um, and managed to make, you know, just about survive through the, the kind of Patterson crisis and general malaise in the industry at the turn of the century. Because um, this was another one that was founded at the you know, 1890X and either shut down a couple of years later or barely got through and then really struggled afterwards. And it actually closed in 1913. It was then sold to the Klein Leash Distillery Company in 1916. Klein Leash has been covered off as a Highland distillery, Klein Leash and Brewer, both phenomenally good whiskies. Um, but the following year, 1917, it then transferred to um, J and G Stewart, who were part of the Distillers Company Limited. Now, D Distillers Company Limited, or DCL, eventually became part of UDV, United Distillers, who eventually became Diageo. And this miniature, um, which is a bottling by Gordon McPhail, part of their range called Connoisseur's Choice, it's actually got um, Space Light Single Scotch Whiskey, distilled at Colburn Distillery, proprietors J and G Stewart Limited. So um, it then closed in 1985, shortly before UDV, um, so shortly before DCL became part of UDV. Because uh, Diageo was, God, when was Diageo? About 2000? Something like that, I can't remember. Um, so just before it would have gone towards UDV, DCL were going through a process of the 80s, again, a bit like the turn of the century, the mid 70s to late 80s was a crap time for Scotch whiskey. There was really low demand for it. Irish and American whiskey was really big. Um, it was it was general kind of, you know, economy wasn't brilliant in the late 70s, 80s, let's face it. So there was just no demand for Scotch in the 80s, particularly kind of 19, 1978 to 1986, 87. Distilleries were going like, particularly 1983 and 1985, there are bloody loads of them shut down um, in that time. So this was one of them. This was one where it was like, it's not, it's not efficient. It's not cost effective for us to, to operate. We're going to close it down in 1985. And 
it is um, no more. That's it. They um, cancelled the license to distill in 1992. Um, it was dismantled. And um, two years ago, was it 2014? Yes, two years ago, um, the, the actual warehouses of the distillery were bought by a company called, was it ACEO? Yeah, ACEO, who are a whiskey broker. Um, and the distillery buildings are actually now used as um, essentially maturation warehouses, stock holding for the independent bottler, Myron McDavid. Um, and it's almost like it's their kind of center, their hub. Um, not just Myron McDavid, there are um, uh, stock, there are casks sitting maturing for other clients, but it's, it's basically Murray McDavid's kind of, you know, almost their headquarters in terms of that's where we keep all our stock to be, then be bottled up. So the, the buildings are still operational, the distillery, nah, that's it, no more, gone. So this particular one, um, there, were, there was never an official bottling, it was used purely in blends. Apparently when it's Johnny Walker Red Label as well, um, but it was purely in blends and it, as we're already finding going through Speyside, there are a lot of distilleries in Speyside that there aren't official single malt bottlings, it just goes into blends, that's all they do. You know, um, Alta Vein, Braval, they, it's just, they don't do single malts, there's no point because we're gonna use it in something like Johnny Walker Red Label and make our money through that. That's all it's for. So um, there was one semi-official bottling that was after it closed. It was uh, released in 2000 by Diageo and it was part of their rare malt selection. Uh, and it was a 21 year old. That was really the only official bottling you could get. So this particular one, as I mentioned, is uh, Gordon McPhail bottling. This is what the bottle looks like um, in bigger than that. Um, it's 1972. Now the annoying thing about the miniatures of Connoisseur's Choice is that it tells you when it's distilled, 1972, doesn't tell you when it was bottled, which is a pain in the backside. Because if you Google Colburn 1972 Connoisseur's Choice, there's actually two 1972s. There's one with a slightly older labeling, which was bottled in sometime in the 1990s. And this one is apparently, because it's a slightly more updated label, was bottled in possibly 2000, but then I read somewhere else that it was bottled in 2002 and this is actually a 30 year old. So it's either a 28 year old or a 30 year old Colburn, one or the other. Still, pretty damn good. Now, um, I did find the full size bottle available in a place called the Green Welly Stop, um, which is a um, retailer in Scotland somewhere. And they were selling a bottle of this, which apparently they had in stock for 350 quid so this ain't cheap and i've just opened it so we've gone past the point of no return now because that's potentially well i can theoretically do maths but i can't be bothered but that's like 20 25 quids worth of whiskey so i'm going to pour about 10 to 15 quids worth of whiskey <laughs> into my jigger and we'll see how we'll go um again could be could be crap who knows just because it's shut just because it's 28 or 30 years old doesn't mean it's going to be amazing um, it's 40 percent and i'm working on the assumption that they've not added color i don't know whether it's chill filtered but i'm, I'm going on the assumption that gordon mcphail didn't color any of their connoisseurs choice i could be wrong though but this is already looking quite orangey quite orange marmalade actually um, what I don't know is what casks we use, whether it's sherry casks or bourbon casks. Um, but it is a definite, not quite umber, but it's like an orange marmalade colour. It's nice though. Mmm. And it's kind of orange marmalade on the nose as well. And for something called Colburn, there is actually a slightly charcoal y smokiness to it. It's really soft. It's a really soft smokiness, but it's there. And there's a lovely old leather nose to it as well. You can, you can really tell this is like a, a, an old whiskey, you know, like a 28, 25, 30 year old, however old it is. You can tell there's some age on this. There's a lovely, rich, deep, sweetness to it but it's a it's a weird kind of leathery um kind of waxy oily no it's more it's not waxy it's more oily it's like an oily sweetness it reminds me a little bit 
and this is very much a good thing. It reminds me of the oily, soft smokiness of a Klein Leash or a Brora. Maybe not quite as smoky as Brora, but it's there, it's, it's going that angle. It's a very slight oiliness, but it's a lovely, deep, rich, aged, you know, leather armchairs in a mansion type aging. You know, big Tudor house with tall ceilings and roaring log fires and all that lot. Oh, that is a cracking nose. That really is. I could just sniff that all day. It's, it's honeyed as well. It's a real honey, like a rich, decadent honey cake. But a honey cake that's been made in the Victorian times. It, it really is just, it just evokes age and antiquity. Oh, you wowzers. I hope this is good on the palate. It's actually, even though it's 40%, it's got heat to it that suggests it's something like 43, 46. It's a little bit hotter than I was expecting. It starts off so silky, almost liqueur-like, like, like li literally liquidy, honey, syrupy, soft goodness. You know, kind of like a golden syrup almost. But then as it sits on your tongue, it really starts, the heat starts to come through. And it really doesn't taste like a 40%. It really tastes like it's like, like I say, 46, something like that. Now the smokiness is there, but it's not, it's not as mellow as it is on the nose. It's slightly dry. The whole whiskey is slightly drying. And it's not, the Capadonic that I've just had, had this, prominent oakiness not overpowering but it was there was a definite oaky woodiness to it and this has a an oakiness but it's not quite as it's not quite as in your face as the capadonic but, but it's more drying it, it feels like it's sucking the moisture out of your mouth a bit and it, it leaves your tongue on the finish slightly kind of um, i need a i need a drink of water or something it's so warming on the throat as well and it really lingers but it's not it's medicinal, but it's not medicinal TCP, anything like that. It's like when you have cough syrup and you can feel it kind of sitting in your throat as though it's coating your throat and just warming you. And that's what it feels like now. It feels like the whiskey hasn't gone down into my stomach. It's kind of sitting on, on my throat and down to kind of my chest and it's just warming everything. Whereas the Capadonic was more of a spring summer whiskey, this is definitely a winter whiskey. <sighs> But on the palate, again, like the Capadonic, the palate is not quite as good as the nose. The nose is phenomenal. The nose is absolutely fantastic. Full on antique spirits. It's just, it's pure age and luxury and decadence. But the palate is, starts off as it enters your mouth, age, honey, richness, again, decadence. But then it thins out very slightly and the woodiness kicks in, this oakiness kind of kicks in and it's a little bit dry and it just takes everything away. It's like, it's starting to give you some flavors and it goes, no, 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 I'm actually gonna take it from you. And while I'm at it, I'll have all the moisture in your mouth as well. And it's just a bit of a letdown. It's still bloody good, don't get me wrong, it's just not quite as amazing as the nose is. Now it might be one where you pour it into your glass and you leave it for half an hour. You, you pour a healthy mixture in your glass, leave it for half an hour, let everything in that settle out in the air. And it might be, it might become incredible. It might be as good as the nose if you left it for half an hour. I'm not gonna sit here for half an hour. I've done nearly 15 minutes already, and I've got another one to do. So I'm not gonna leave this for half an hour. I do have that, which I could, if I wanted to, pour all that in a glass and leave that for half an hour and see if it gets any better. But I'm not, because 
I've got to do 25 mils of each separate distillery. So that is gonna go aside to somebody, I don't know who, but it's very, very good indeed. Um, and is it worth paying 350 quid for? Is anything worth 350 quid? Well, obviously, but <sighs> you're paying for what it is in terms of like the rarity of it and it's no more. And uh, again, the age of it. Is it 350 quid's worth of pure liquid in the glass? Probably not. Are there better whiskies for less? Yes, but you can pick them up anywhere, whereas that is rare as rocking horse dude are. It is very, very good indeed though. It's just, it's not amazing, it's not mind blowing, but it is a really good whisk. To be honest, I think you could just sit there and nose it. And you, you, you own it, I mean, there's what? Well, there's probably gob in that more than anything else, but that nose is phenomenal. That nose is broader, that really is. It's like you could, you could stick that blind next to Brora and go, which one's Brora and what's not? And you'd struggle. You'd probably be able to pick it, but you'd struggle. It really is that complex, rich, warm, smoky, oiliness that Brora and Klein Leash have got, which is absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. But, and it's kind of apt that it was sold to Klein Leash. I almost wonder whether that was the reason and whether that kind of influenced how the, the style of the whiskey became. But, it's just not quite there on the palate. And it's such a shame, such a shame. Right, quick rinse out again, and then onto something even older, believe it or not, and potentially even rarer, maybe. Right, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.